Hello and welcome to our lecture on LEED certification and green building design. So when we talk about green building design, there's a lot that goes into it. So this is energy efficiency, um, actually renewable energy in the building, wind, solar, biomass, using less water, recycling gray water or wastewater, improving the indoor air quality, including low VOC paints and carpets, reducing uh, microorganisms or bacteria in the air. It could be a green wall, it could be a green roof, it could be solar preheating of, of hot water, it could be daylighting, so you use less electricity, natural lighting, light wells, passive solar heating, and then stormwater management integration are just a few examples of things that are commonly used in green building design. So specifically, we're gonna talk about LEED certification. So what is LEED? LEED actually stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So it's basically an internationally recognized green building certification program, which provides third party verification that a building or community was designed and built utilizing strategies aimed at increasing performance, reducing waste and improving quality of life. It was created by the US Green, um, green Building Council, a nonprofit in 93, and it's now grown to over 80,000, probably over 100,000 projects at this point with, um, and all states and, and many countries have adopted either the same standards or similar standards to the Green Building Council. So as you can see here in the um, steady growth by numbers, so this was actually written in 2016, so it is a little bit old, but at that point it was 16 years of steady growth. So now we're talking about 10 years of or 20 years of steady growth. And basically, um, in the early 2000s, there was again um, roughly about 60 projects a month that came online. Um, and but then in 1999, they, again they revamped it, and um, and they continued to increase. And then really um, after 99, when again the, the the housing boom went down a little bit, you saw a little bit of decreases, but um, it's been increasing. Um, especially in the last couple of years and an increase in registration for um, a lot of the new types of projects that they have now. So um, when we talk about LEED, there's a measuring tool for building and homeowners. The one that we currently use is called version four. So I want us to show a little bit of video. Again, this is from the same organization from, from, from the LEED organization. Um, and this is LEED version four. And so they have a little video they can, that um, ex explains it a little bit, but obviously we'll go over it in more detail. But I'm gonna show this kind of introduction video to LEED version four. 20 years ago, buildings were constructed as a series of independent systems, each created separately, but working towards the same goal of keeping the outdoors out. When LEED was introduced in 1998, it challenged the status quo with the concept that buildings actually function as living, breathing organisms. Similar to the human body, each system has a different goal, but they all must work together so that the body can perform. One cannot operate properly without the other. In the case of buildings, not only are systems not separate, but by honoring these interconnections, the building can be built and operated in a more sustainable and efficient way. For example, by considering insulation materials and daylighting, building managers can use less energy on heating and cooling their buildings. By bringing architects, engineers, designers, material specialists, and others to the table during the design phase, decisions can be made that position the building for excellence in operational performance. LEED has gone from a set of aspirations to a marketplace standard, where the technologies of energy efficiency and sustainability have become commonplace practices. As these advances changed the marketplace, the marketplace changed LEED. LEED 4 is the lead of the future, where we challenge the still new marketplace to go further, to make the next great leap toward better, cleaner, healthier buildings where people live and work. So when we talk about LEED version four, um, the idea with LEED version four is that it promotes um, this whole building approach and it specifically looks at six key areas of human and environmental health. 
looks at climate change, human health, water resources, it was water savings, now it's resources, biodiversity, the green economy, and the community and natural resources. So again, it's changed from before when it, it was focused a little bit more narrowly and we'll go through those categories. So again, the Green Building Council is focused on developing and refining the LEED standards while the Green Building Certification Institute runs the certification and LEED professional accreditation programs. So again, you, in order to verify a building or to be the project PI of an architect for a green, um, for a LEED certified building, you have to go through the certification process. So again, um, this idea with the, the LEED is that they do education, they do forms, they build community and provide the tools and expertise to kind of transfer the market into a more sustainable built environment. So um, when we look at um, LEED certification, the idea is not only does it reduce the carbon footprint, it can improve the indoor air quality for the occupants. Um, again, the idea is that it recognizes, um, receive recognition in your community. You know this is a LEED certified um, building, certified silver, platinum, gold. Um, receive third party validation of your achievement. Qualify for tax incentives. Um, receive positive marketing and comply with new regulations. And so in Maryland, um, we've implemented a green building tax credit and we actually require that state buildings meet LEED certified standards. So you have to be at least LEED certified. You may, maybe not have to be a platinum certified, but at least LEED certified um, in order to, if more than 50% of the money comes from the state. And again, the University of Maryland has similar with our new buildings on campus also um, having LEED certification, depending on again, where the money comes from. If it comes from the state, if at least part of the money comes from the state, um, if it meets that threshold, it has to be LEED certified. Um, again, Cook County, Illinois requires that all new county facilities in Chicago area, um, that they have to be cert silver certification. Um, Portland actually at one point created their own LEED cert certification process. Um, so it's a tailored version for the city, for their city funded buildings. Seattle sets a silver rating. So this might be something, again, if you're a private developer, but in building a building in Seattle, you can build it however you want to. But if the money is using a certain percentage of Seattle city funds, then it would have to be built in, in a LEED certified, LEED silver level. Um, so what LEED 4 has done is try to increase the ability for other entities to get LEED certification versus just a home or a build or a business. So it actually now includes um, commercial um, interiors as well as retail interiors. So the idea is that if you're renting a building, you can't really rebuild the building or the, the insulation, but you can um, do things inside your retail space to make it LEED certified. Um, it also has one for, again, for building operations and maintenance. If you've already built your building, um, there's not so much you can do about the insulation and about your, you know, the, the water system that's already in there, but you can do building operation and maintenance in order to, again, get LEED certified in the way that you operate and maintain your building or school. Um, again, homes can be LEED certified. These can be single structured or multifamily structures. And again, this, this originally was modeled off of um, EPA's Energy Star, where you were using um, appliances that were um, energy efficient. But again, it's expanded beyond just energy efficiency to again, indoor air quality, um, water resources and others. Um, there's also now a neighborhood development um, LEED certification. So this is if you're um, designing a new neighborhood, a new community, or just how you're, um, how you're growing your community, you can actually get LEED certified in that neighborhood design. So again, for this, this rating system, again, you have LEED for new construction, for the core and the shell, for schools, for healthcare, for hospitals, for retail, um, for commercial interiors, retail interiors, existing building, existing schools, and then there's these different reference guides that go with these different rating systems. And then you can get certified based on um, reviewing those reference guides, taking course, courses, and then taking the certification exam. So again, when it was first passed, LEED certification was based on a 100 point scale. And basically you got so much for sustainable sites. Um, you know, again, usually it was taller buildings, so you'd have the less land print, less impermeable surface. Um, 
um, water efficiency, you got so many points, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, and indoor air quality. And then you could get bonus points for if you had innovation design or a regional priority. So this was based on um, how they used to certify those. Um, so this again was this old classification system. Um, but I'm gonna go over a few of these just to kind of give you an idea of what it is because it, it directly parlays into version four. So for example, sustainable site, the idea was to minimize the disturbed area of the site, build at a moderate or high density, low impact landscaping, minimize non-permeable surfaces. Water efficiency was conservation of both indoor and outdoor, capturing rainwater, reusing gray water, um, using water efficient irrigation, um, installing um, high efficiency faucet head showers, urinals, et cetera, to reduce water consumption. With energy and atmosphere, again, promoting on-site renewable energy, maximizing on-site energy performance, reducing the need for energy. Um, so again, ca careful attention was given to um, having um, appliances that were low energy, um, air infiltration, window selection, heating and cooling, lighting, daylighting, um, and heating so that it was more efficient. Materials and resources is again looking at use of environmentally friendly materials, minimizing the amount of waste during construction. Again, if you've ever seen a building being torn down to build a new building, the amount of waste that's produced is very high, and finding other uses for, those, for that construction waste. So for an example on this, a credit you could get, for example, if, if you recycled in your new building, 10% of it was recycled content, you could get one point one credit. If 20%, then you would get another credit. Um, again, if you had um, pre-consumer versus post-consumer recycled content, you would get 15% of it was pre-consumer, but it was post-consumer actually being utilized, the stuff that was torn down and then used again, um, then you would get 100% of that credit. Um, for example, again, so having um, regional materials. So this was the idea that was extracted, harvested, and manufactured within 500 miles of the job site is what it used to be that now reduce that. Um, but you, it was percentages by weight. So 10% of the weight of the building, 20% of the weight of the building. If it was sustained from a regional area, you got points. Again, the idea of a rapid re renewable. So if you're using bamboo and other things that are rapidly renewable and it's 2.5% of all the building materials are at least rapidly renewable, then you would get one credit for that. Um, so agrofiber, wheat base, bamboo. Again, getting certified wood. So if it comes from certified um, forest based on weight, um, then you actually have to show that chain of custody and you would get um, a point for getting certified wood. Um, if you had, again, if you use these agrofire products that have no formaldehyde resins, which again can cause um, indoor air pollution, then you would get a credit. Um, but these are again, um, all or nothing. So all the wood stuff you brought in ha would have to have no um, formaldehyde use or you wouldn't get the credit. Again, if we look at these certified woods, the idea is that to have it certified by the Forest Stewardship Council, it can't be any of it illegally harvested. It can't be harvested in violation of traditional and civil rights. Forests where high conservation um, values are threatened. Um, and <clears throat> it has to have harvest converted. It can't be wood, harv wood harvest from forests that were converted to plantations. Um, or from genetically modified trees. And if we look at the indoor air quality, again, reducing pollutants and increase, increasing indoor air quality. So if you have moisture control, proper venting, air, ventil air filtering, um, increased over above and beyond what a normal house would be, you would get credits for those. Um, this idea with the regional priority is that basically the, the um, discourages sites within fragile ecosystems and available to um, credits if you have walking spaces, biking trails, nearby to public trans trans um, transit, you would get points for those things. So again, the first version, um, they only had 69 points with some of these, and then we went and we didn't have the regional priority. Then we went to this 2009, where we had again 110 points with the regional priority. And then finally to lead 2012, which is the version four, um, which is again based on those, but is is more intuitive system. The point weighting to reflect um, credits that have more sustainable impact. So instead of just getting a credit for this and a credit for that, the credits are based on 
really the impact of that. Um, and then again, we, um, the regionalization of these credits so that different projects could have additional points if, if, if in that area that was a regional priority. Um, they again added these new um, sector adaptations so you can now get LEED certified and they have criteria for data centers, use a lot of electricity, warehouses, distribution system, hospitalities, existing schools, residential projects. Um, they simplified the credit submission requirement so they have these now videos and step-by-step -step reference guides, but again, it still has to be done by somebody who is LEED certified. Um, it's more focused on outcomes, and so there's more of a certification process so that it's you actually have to prove <laughs> that you're meeting these certain criteria, um, how the building is managed, that it really is managed more efficiently. Um, and then again, they change the impact categories. So the Existing categories were kind of used, but changed, and they added these location, transportation, building performance, and then this integrated process. So, for example, prerequisites now, instead of just getting a point for this, this, and this, you have to first do water meeting reporting, building level energy meeting, and fundamental commissioning verification, where you verify how much energy your, your building's actually using then you get points for going above and beyond that threshold. So enhanced water metering, advanced metering, um, actually reconciling with actual energy performance. So this idea is that you can verify um, the quality related to the exterior with this commissioning and calibrated to build a certain way and now you actually have to show that it is operating in that manner. Um, again, now they have these regional priorities based on zip codes. And so, for example, um, Cleveland. So Cleveland gets four things. Every zip code gets four things as their regional priorities. So they're not new credits. So it's still credits that are already there. So these are all credits that um, you can get anyway. But the incentive is with this, you can get, um, you can get extra points. You get not only the point for doing it, but then you get another point for um, it's a bonus points for doing these regional. So if you're in Cleveland and you're doing stuff with stormwater quantity, quality, innovative wastewater treatment, on-site renewable energy, then you would get extra points for that. Again, in Boston for brown for redevelopment, heat island effect, roof and knock roof, on-site renewable energy, you get extra points for that. Um, so again, and when we look at climate change, like that's one category, but then within that, there is all of these, again, um, these, these, these are all the categories, sorry, climate change is one category, but then we also have individual health and well-being, protect and restore water resources, biodiversity ecosystem services, sustainable and regenerative material resource cycles, greener economy, social equity, environmental justice, community health and quality of life. So these are these new categories now. So if we look at climate change, again, they're looking at energy use, whether it's energy use in terms of water, materials, transportation, energy supplies. Um, if we look at um, individual health, this is when they're looking at, again, um, mortality, human health, well-being, how you're living in that building. Water resources, again, is pollution, um, pollution consumption, and natural hydrology. Um, biodiversity, open spaces, land preservation, um, material categories, again, reducing um, the demand of material resources, um, the life cycle cost, so again, cradle to grave, are you using materials that have already been used, um, and reducing your non-renewable -fuel, fuel sources. Again, this idea of the local economy, which we already talked about sourcing local wood, well, now this is just a whole category, so you know, what are you doing to use your local economy? What's your return on investment? How are you building a green economy by, um, in that, in that um, building of your building? Um, environmental justice, again, creating sense of place, providing affordable, equitable neighborhoods, um, promoting access to the area, and human rights and environmental justice. And so again, with these categories now, Certified is 49 to um, 40 to 49 points, then you can have more for silver, more for gold, and then finally, if you're 80 or above, then you're platinum certified. So, with this integrated process, this is one point. Um, so, it, it's the analysis is kind of informed design. So, 
you build the thing, you look at the facade, you look at the elevation, you look at downsizing. So this is how we normally would build a building. Now there's an um, integrated process. Instead of having this HVAC system, we're gonna do this. Instead of having this lights, we basically do, now we're doing this. And so it basically shows that you've informed your building design from a basic building to a better building. Um, again, material life cycle disclosure, again, requires a life cycle analysis. And those of you who have taken renewable energy with me, we went through life cycle analysis and what that means. And again, so they require that. And so now we have to look at what is the environmental impact of these products that are using one product versus another product? Um, how are you supporting local economy? What's the recycled content? So some of these things we've already went through, there were past iterations, they're still here, but they're now into this kind of complete material life cycle disclosure assessment. You get two points for this. Again, construction, demolition, waste. Again, um, options if you, the waste reduction strategies is now, instead of based on percentage of total building weight, because again, a, a brick building is gonna weigh much different than a, um, a different type of construction. Now it's based on square footage. So if we have this much floor space, this is how much, um, no more than two pounds of waste per for square footage that you're building. So um, again, advanced, advanced energy metering. So again, the idea is instead of just doing um, energy in, energy out, you're actually looking at it on each appliance level and doing smart metering. Um, and for, again, you get points now for bicycle network storage and shower rooms. So if you actually have storage and shower rooms, you get points for that now. Um, so again, if we look at 2009 versus the version four, the 2012 one, again, the, if this building was certified before in the 2009, it got lead gold with 63 points. Now it only is lead silver. They're not going to take away its gold, but as, as it's, um, as you move forward, those certification criteria has basically gotten harder. <laughs> so this um, a building in Orlando, for example, was LEED certified in 2009 version here, it would not be. And in New York, again, it went from gold to silver. So we've made the, as buildings have become more efficient anyway, the LEED process has become um, more difficult, but also it's more meaningful in terms of verifying that it's actually um, doing not just energy efficiency, not just water, but all of the categories. And so again, we talked about rapidly renewable in 2009. Now you're looking at sourcing all of the things, how much concrete, how much steel, um, you know, what, what, where, where did you mine it? What's the life cycle of that? Looking at, you know, local recycled content. Now we're looking at what's the raw material extractions, what is, you know, kind of disclosure and optimization of all of the materials that you're using. Uh, <clears throat> and so we're doing like a whole building now for design and construction, a whole building life cycle assessment. Um, now we actually have recertification timelines. So you have your initial certification where you look at transportation, where are you located to public transportation. Um, you do your waste audit. You do indoor air quality and outdoor air quality um, intake. Your um, occupant you survey a cleaning audit. What supplies are you using? And then you would again each year do different things. So you would do waste ongoing tracking waste stream audits, and then again in year four, you would have a cleaning audit, another survey, and then in year five, do this all again that you initial certified to get recertified at that same level. So this is new. And so again, what are the products that you're using? What are the pest controls you're using? How much are you recycling? What are the dur durable goods diversion? Um, looking at, um, Energy Star data, refrigerant additives, light bulb purchases, tenant education, all of that is now part of the certification process. Um, so what you guys are gonna do for your mini assignment, and we'll do this actually on Thursday, is take this lead practice exam. So the mini assignment has been posted, so please look at it. We're actually gonna do it during class on Thursday. So in class on Tuesday, we're just going to discuss lead certification, and then we're gonna do the practice test on Thursday during class. So thank you very much, and um, I will um, end here.